exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And to join me on The Spicy Life podcast in the G spot, we have the returning, the phenomenal, the fabulous Azure D. Johnson. And the crowd goes wild Ooh. yet again. We got <laughs> Miss Actrice Extraordinaire in the building. Uh, mentioned to you guys last time that I would be bringing her back on an episode. And we will be getting into today how friendship, breakup, and makeups happen. And the, the heart of this episode is actually going to be about uh, relationship restoration. And we're going to use our friendship as an example of what we went through, but then also give you tips on like what you can go through too, the things that we've learned from it. And so to start off the episode, I usually ask, as my spice breaker, when was the first time you fell in love with yourself? Now, because she's already answered this, she gets to answer. When was the first time she fell in love with me? With Spicy you? Spicy <laughs> That just threw me all the way off. When did you know that you wanted to be my bestie? <laughs> um, Think about what stood out to you maybe about me or um, how you made a decision like, dang, I think this girl and I are going to be friends. Um, as your phone vibrates yeah, on my show, this is, I know. you were supposed to turn <laughs> it was off. supposed to be on silent, and it was. I don't know. Sorry. The only person that matters is me right now. Okay, let me that, just turn it all the way off. Okay. Okay. Maybe calling you. Um, okay, let me see. The first time I fell in love with you. Yes, I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> in love with you? That was the moment that you were like, oh my God, she needs to be my G. Um, well, we went to college together, mm -hmm. so that was the first time I met you. And I just remember you being like, just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. We yeah, said can we I keep gonna, it real? We said we were going to have a full-fledged, like, heart-to-heart -heart conversation about yeah. our friendship. Because on the last episode, we promised everybody that we would have yeah. a friendship episode. And so I dragged you here today yeah. to make you have that episode with me. Because people need to know this yeah. stuff. We've been through a lot. That's true. It's so, it's like so many years. I mean, not to give away our age, but... Um, <laughs> We've We're had a 25. What are you plethora talking about? of experiences, life experiences. We've gone through so much. Um, but I think, you know, we were friends but before I actually think I fell in love <laughs> with you because we were connected. Of course, we went to school together. But I would say, like, knowing you as a friend is to love you. Like, you are really ride or die for your friends. Mm -hmm. You you show up in a big way. And after a few scenarios of you kind of showing up in a big way for me, I realized, like, dang, you really love me. And so mm. you showing your love for me has made me like love you back because you go so hard. You go so hard <laughs> for your friends. And I think you you require a lot, but it's because you show up in a big way. So I think that made me fall in love with like who you are um, as a friend. I mean, do you want specific examples? Well, or I feel like there's so I can't. I mean, how much time we got? Because. I don't need to hear, like, uh, it, it is more just how to switch up my spice breaker. Um, <laughs> okay. But there was, like, so if I go back to, like, my moment for you, right? If I were to flip it and be like, okay, when um, when did I, I decide that we would be friends? Was definitely, like, UC Berkeley, we, mm -hmm. I think we were in one of our communications classes. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember, was it calm? I can't remember what class it was. We were in poli sci. Oh, poli sci. Yeah, see, I remember. <laughs> Which I think we dropped out of. Yeah. <laughs> But we were meant to be in that class that mm -hmm. we weren't supposed to be in, but we were meant to be there for each other. And I remember you, I remember your first act of selflessness, which was um, not just like talking to me and um, showing an interest in us, like studying together or doing work together. But it was really in the moment where you had to go to your other best friend and say, I you. think that she should live with us. Yeah. We need a third roommate, yeah. and I think that she could be the third roommate. You don't just live – at this day and age, we definitely don't just live with nobody. Yeah. But – Because she didn't really like you. Yeah, she, she did not like and me. And I had to actually plead <laughs> my case of, like, no, but she's this, she's this, she's this. Just give her a chance. You know what? That was probably – that, that was, was the You time. started writing for me day, I, day one. Yeah, like, because I and, – and, you know, we weren't, like – we were tight. We weren't, like, how we are now. Yeah. But I – fighting had to – I had to fight – for your rights. No, seriously. So that you could be our third roommate. Yes, I needed a place. I had, uh, I was at Spelman. I needed a place to live mm -hmm. when I came back to Cal. And um, 
we can say Jennifer. She's been on the yeah, show. Um, and Jennifer wasn't wrong when she's like, no, I don't really know about her. She had like her reasons, which is another episode. But yes. mind you, Jennifer is yes. one of my besties now. She like, definitely you don't just get to hate me. You're going to wind up loving me if you give me a chance. But you having to like convince her, mm -hmm. right? Um, showed that, and I think that was also the first time that I got to witness uh, your ability to be like one of the most incredible publicists in the world when you believe in something. <laughs> and so not only did like me making, you making me a roommate serve like the greater good because you guys needed a third person to mm -hmm. pay that rent. I For think it was rent. like, the rent was like 800. A person. It, was, <laughs> it was so cheap at the time. <laughs> Oh my God, to go it back to so those low. days. But even then you guys, we need a third roommate to, to yeah. split this. But like seeing that the, the first time you, um, you, your ability, right, to like, uh, I guess go hard, but also accomplish something that you wanted. Like that mindset to me of mm -hmm. like, oh no, you wanted this thing and you convinced your best friend. And then we like actually moved in together. I wind up befriending your best friend. Now she's one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. And then from then we have literally introduced each other to, to all of our friends, 20 new friends. We're like the connector yeah, of all of our friends. Like we merged the, the connectors, the groups together. So yeah. I think our relationship started with seeing a lot of commonalities and similarities, mm -hmm. but also areas like where we could strengthen each other or things that like we just automatically understood. Mm -hmm. Like we got one another. Mm -hmm. um, I think we both grew up in like a certain household mm -hmm. where there was like uh, dysfunction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just gonna keep it real. It, we we right. both grew up, you know, in in a household like that, and so some of that lended to like the high level of responsibility that mm -hmm. we've had to take on. Taking care of our siblings. Taking care of our siblings. Being like the mother yeah. and the sister at the same time. And then also wanting to like do better for your family and go off to college. Mm -hmm. But then also, I being think. Being the first to go to college yeah, as well. Yeah, being the first. Yeah, we had a lot in common. So there was like a bunch of things, you guys. Um, so I just wanted to give you like some preliminary on like the beginning of where the relationship started, right? Because we ask these things all the time for like romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. We're well, like, how did you guys first meet? When did you first fall in love? And so I think it's important that just as much energy as we acknowledge into romantic relationships, we also do for friendships. Absolutely. You're very similar to me in the fact that we are very close with our friends. Like mm -hmm. we take our friendships hella, hella, hella seriously mm -hmm. in the sense of like they are our friends, our family. Mm -hmm. Not everybody feels like that. And so this episode is really for people who maybe what don't have a belief in friendships mm -hmm. or um, have gone through some challenges with maybe women and really want to maybe get a different perspective on like the benefits even of working through challenges and stuff. Um, what was your, what sparked your interest in why you felt like we needed to do this episode? Well, I think you're right. You hit it on the money. We both value friendships. I mean, it's evident in the relationships we have now mm -hmm. um, with, it's not just us. I mean, we have groups of friends that we've known for 20 years plus. And to me, I value that in my life. Mm -hmm. My friends are my family. I don't have a big family. So I lean on a lot of the friendships in my life to be like that yeah. force or that um, th that family for me. So um, when we had the last podcast conversation, it was out of the blue. I think I forgot how it sparked. We were like, yeah. oh my God. The, because <laughs> I feel like we have real time experience for us having our friendship that has lasted 20 years plus, but then having a breakup. Yep. Then also us having other friends yep. where we've had breakups. Yep. And then we've had to restore those relationships as well Ooh. as our own. Yeah. We just have a lot to draw from. And I, I do agree that something like this would be necessary for people that you know, are working through those challenges themselves that have maybe let ego come in the way of their your friendship, mm -hmm. you know, and I just have gotten so much out of my friendships and I just really feel like people need to know that there's value in friendship. And I think, and also like doing the work to heal the, the friendship, work, yeah. people avoid, just like in romantic relationship, they avoid doing the work. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with friendship. It's kind mm -hmm. of easier, especially with this day and age and everything on social media saying like, if they don't serve you, let them go. If right. it doesn't serve you, let it go. Yeah. And I'm coming like, well, if we let everybody go when, which, when there's a season that doesn't serve yeah. us, then who we gonna have left? Right, right. Now, some people do need to, some people, some people that do. don't serve you anymore should be let go. But I think that we but. don't give as much permission to people to allow them to go through things we don't mm -hmm. even give ourselves permission i think or make mistakes yeah or, oh you know gosh. fuck up like everybody messes up you know so do you have to write them off because they made one mistake you know and we're all yeah. still learning and we're all in our process of evolving everybody's at different levels yep. and stages of their process so you kind of have to 
weigh that in too. It's like we all are in this together. Like yep. we can benefit from growing together and making mistakes together and then coming back together. Yeah. I think also too, like if your friends didn't maybe defy your non-negotiables or your deal breakers, um, you can ask yourself too, like, is there room or space to let this person back in? Because just like how it would be like, well, if a, a, if a guy crossed the deal breakers, you know, maybe this isn't a relationship that you should revisit. But with friendships, I think that the more like time you will, and it is inevitable, just like a relationship, to go through stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you are going to go through mm -hmm. things. And in order for the relationship to last, sometimes you have to endure your ugly season or your friend's ugly season. Mm -hmm which I think that we've had a lot of <laughs> endurance. And so just to yeah. give you guys a little bit more context before um, we even go di di diving into deeper um, about like our breakup, I have lived with Dee Dee almost as long Azure D. as your D. I've lived with Azure D almost Come as long on, as I lived with my mother. <laughs> really? So when did I graduate? I, I went to college at 17, 18, 18? Oh wow! So, so then, we how long did we live together? And we college lived, and that's true. We in an adulthood. I forgot. I think about I lived that. with you like two decades almost. That's um, true. Wow. <laughs> so if I, it, it probably wasn't. Let me think. Maybe like, ooh, ten or fifteen years. What would it be? Actually, you're right because I forgot about Arkstone and we like, live, what that we live in Arkstone, El Cerrito. Like we <laughs> move. <laughs> yes. So like, there's been there's been a history, right, of a lot of time, um, with this person. I've I have been in a relationship with her longer than I have my husband and I live with him, but I have still lived with her longer than I did my husband. Oh. So I probably know your living habits and all of this stuff, you way know, more. Way, way more. Yeah. And so, you know, it's funny when we do a comparison or the, you know, the analysis of like when you lay it out like that, yeah, I'm just sitting there like, wow, I live, with, I live with you a long time. But I think it is that amount of time that at some point there is going to be a, a crack. That mm -hmm. if we don't communicate effectively or if we don't release certain things, um, start to turn into a bigger cracks and then start to maybe even crumble. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can probably get into because I want to give them the backstory on like why we broke up and understand mm -hmm. that I'm calling it a breakup because it was a real breakup. My I mean, heart was broken. My yeah. heart was broken. Um, I mean, especially when you're that connected <laughs> to somebody and then it just it shifts into something different. I mean. Yeah, it, yeah. And then not to real. mention that you get to see the entire thing in a play that your ex wrote about us. <laughs> um, so what yes. Talking about, really? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and also because since we are the connector, we have two, we have these groups of friends that were also impacted by mm -hmm. that breakup as well. It was a real division. It was like Team Maddie versus Team Azure yes, D. Yes, and it's so, like marriage, right? When it was, it's like, oh no, we're going through a divorce. Who do yeah, we like choose? it was a real thing. It was the same thing. So um, I want to just give them a little bit of backstory about the breakup. Um, are we going like really into it? D yeah, let's this, just give them like some details. That? You'll have uh, your probably your. I think we have different version. interpretations too. We may have different interpretations. Okay, let's hear. Yours. I don't know. I mean, what? No, I actually think I want to hear what what you feel the breakup. My was. interpretation was that, um, and I feel like there was several things that led to it. Right, I feel like yeah. um, it was the. Um, not just the overlap of the amount of time that we spent together, but in our lives having mirrored each other so much, whether it be our failures or our accomplishments, um, there was some esteem issues I feel like we both had going on and uncertainties in the world and things that we were questioning that based on our maturity level, because we were still very young, we are in our... 20s when we first got together um Dang, saying, God, this it sounds like, so funny like, we were like we i was like 18 together. when i first met you or 19 when i first met you but we wound up like living together um throughout that extent the extension of my 20s so um and early 30s so like the amount of time that we spent we got to witness and have privy to uh a person's vulnerabilities their insecurities um they're like I said highs and lows but also when you experience that much time with someone they're not going to be a perfect person to you so I think there was times when uh parts of my personality that you know came out where I was negligent on the amount of consideration that I had or I was thoughtless about something 
or um, times when you weren't mindful about the impact that maybe your attitude had on the house. Side note, she's a Gemini. You already know how that is living with a Gemini, okay? So I had to, you know, not to throw you Geminis under the bus, but come Team on. Gemini, Gemini season is in full effect. So I just want to let y'all know. So there's a lot of that, like, okay, how is my friend going to show up one day from the next and me always having to feel like uh, navigating that energy, which I do very well with Gemini's because I have a lot of you guys in my life. Uh, but this also like growing season of realizing, I think um, I wanted different things and then also not talking to you about the things that I think were irritating me in the household from like just household chores and responsibilities to things that we were dividing up to, um, Maybe not feeling like uh, you were also as happy for me in certain things that uh, I was making decisions when it came to like my relationship and I think starting off, you know, dating Shay and then uh, in addition to maybe like my decision to go back to school, I felt like there were certain things that weren't supported, but also that I wasn't communicating um, and how I needed you to show up for me during that period. And then me having resentment about uh maybe your relationship even and how it was influenced by your boyfriend at the time. And so like that pouring into, I think, then how I treated you, right? So like it would be like maybe days where I then had an attitude because you um, did something and I didn't communicate it or share with you. And I think it was a, it was a breakdown in communication, but also being and taking things very personal from like birthday invitations to like, oh my God, I didn't get the invitation first. There was a lot of immaturity on my end, um, which I will like highly admit to. There is this certain level of when you do deeply love your friendships, having um, an entitlement and feeling like you should be a, a priority or even there's a ranking in friendships, right? Um, and feeling like uh, I should come first, which is very much, if you think about it, also how we operate in romantic relationship. But I was treating you like that because for a long time, I think you were my husband before my husband was my husband. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, y'all. This is so interesting. I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> but I think that there was a certain uh, expectation and certain things that we were just moving in two different directions. And I think some of it was also, you know, when I moved in with Shay, um, uh, you know, rele releasing that mo living with you and thinking that I was going to lose a part of myself now that I wasn't living with you. And some of that was also scary for me. But then also thinking that you were upset with me about having moved out and moved in with him and maybe putting you in a position where now you had to figure out who you want to replace me with. But they, I think you replaced replacing me with your sister. Mm -hmm. um, but I just remember all of these things happening at once that I feel like unfolded to um, me starting to compile things that were hurting my feelings or that bothered me about you that I wasn't just like sitting you down and talking about. And that level of, I think, irritation like bubbled and bubbled. Mm. To a point where then it was like, okay, I'm, I can't remember the last thing that I was mad at you for that led to the break. I think it was the birthday thing. Was so the I have a thing? whole, this okay. is a great episode because we need a, <laughs> Ivana dance in here because. Okay, Rhea, um, I have a, remember, okay, remind so guys, me. So guys, think about this. We are reflecting, right? So there's the experience and then, then we're in the reflection very place. Much. So our interpretations are going to be based very on. Very different, probably. Or maybe very different. And that's okay too because I'm also, okay. this is a healed conversation and it's a, it's a way that we can like look back and reflect on like mm -hmm. how it happened. So. I, I think that some of what you said I agree with in terms of like just evolving and growing differently and also having our lives mirrored, mirrored that we experience the same things at mm -hmm. the same time. You know, obviously we both wanted to pursue careers in entertainment. That's what kind of made you move here. You know, we mm -hmm. kind of were connected on that. So our lives were kind of mirrored. mirrored. Um, and also we also go through the 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 ups and downs of like trying to pursue mm -hmm. a, a, um, a career in what we've chosen yeah. for our lives. And it's, it's, it's very weighted in that it's emotional. It's an emotional process. It can some, sometimes attack who you are as a person, your esteem level, all mm -hmm. that. Um, but I think for me, when I think of our breakup, I think it's something very specific that it wasn't, I, I was really happy for you with the Shay thing. Um, I wasn't like, I, I also had my own things going on that I had to manage my own stuff, mm -hmm. but it's like, 
it's a lot of pressure to manage your own turmoils or things that you're going through. And then also really being like for what the friend, maybe you wanted to look a different way. Mm -hmm. Whereas I could say, okay, cool, do what you have to do. Or, you know, I'm happy for your next move. But also for me, I'm going through my own process and trying to figure things out. I think for me, what, what led to the actual breakup was an experience with the concert. Coachella. Coachella. The Coachella thing for me was I like about that, but I was like, was that really the that moment? was like so the, that was the moment. For I think you. that was the moment where it was like a clear like I'm not effing with her right now mm -hmm. at all. Like where I was me personally, where I was like, because it was the way in which things were approached. I think it was the way that Coachella thing went down. And it's like, I don't know how specific we want to get because I want to <laughs> make sure that we're serving the people because it's important for you to for the people to know the background, to have context. But I don't know how specific we need to get. But I think how that that played out highlighted a few things for me. One, your immaturity. Yes. Um, and super immature with that situation. It was, it, it, and it was like so many people involved in that that it made – it just blew up to where it didn't have to be like that. It was also your approach that made me feel that you were not a friend. It made me feel like, you know, you were being influenced by other things because in normal life, I don't think you would have came to me like that, um, how you approached me. It was like like how what we value at that time, right? So what I value was this, and you value something else. And it clashed because of how we saw the situation. It was two different ways that we saw you felt that I was you felt that it was something shady whereas everybody didn't see that way like I didn't feel that it was a shady thing that you felt that I did so it was two different interpretations of one scenario and then from that it led to it's just like how things were handled for me I, I took it personal as well like I think we both have taken certain things personal and then that was I would say the the actual like breakup happened. I would agree with but that. But before that, I think the living situation, I think you were right with some of that stuff. Like from what I remember. All those things led up to, I think, yeah. the way that I handled Coachella. Yeah, so it was like, just it I, I will up. tell them, I'm not going to go through a whole okay. story. So uh, I think you had extra hair tickets to Coachella. I didn't have an extra pair of tickets. It wasn't an extra pair. I wasn't able to go because I was okay. working. And you, okay, so you didn't have an extra pair of tickets. She so I was trying to was sell trying to my sell her ticket. ticket. So she winds up selling them to a different friend of mine at a higher price. No. No, I put them on Craigslist. Or I put them. I was just trying to get rid of them, so I put them on for a certain price because what they were going for. Because concert tickets, but sells, not at the price that you bought them for. You I was. Put, they were more that you for whatever you sold they were them, worth at the time. You sold them for what they were worth, but not what you bought them. And yeah. in my mind, I felt like well, because we're friends and we look out for each other, I felt like you should look out for this friend too. For now, your friend, for my not friend. my friend, Correct. at all. Not you, your friend. And so that the know. way that that friend at the time approached it was like, oh, your friend's trying to get over on me because I looked up the price and they're going for this and she sold it to me for this, right? So it was posed to me that way. And I bought into that idea of you doing this like shady thing because I was already from our previous history feeling like there was an injustice in how I had been treated from you. So of course you wouldn't do, you would do this injustice again. Like I was rationalizing this stupid, silly ticket okay but this is how silly things happen right this is how um small little like balls go into like huge you know snowballs and avalanches and so I rationalized something and and told myself a a negative story because I felt a way about my relationship with you at the time and I wind up I would guess, I, I wouldn't say uh, a defamation of character, but I wind up buying into your character um, not being the beautiful person that I know you to be because I'm going through a hurtful season with you and feeling hurt through certain situations of relationship, you know, and, and not feeling like you were happy for me in certain areas. And you were going through your own things. I should have allowed space for that. And so the Coachella thing became super immature where, like, our friend groups, like, separated from each other because they couldn't handle like they it, didn't like the way that I was, it was like this things. outsider person was brought like you were weighing so yeah, much on, on this, this outsider like, person and everybody was like what and it blew up that it just it like you said, something small turned into something big because one but I handled it immaturely yeah the interpretations I think too is like maybe how I was seeing it versus how you were seeing it and then when we did have a talk about it how you approach it was so, it was like you came at me like as if I was a stranger on the street. And I also I felt like, that. 
And that made because I was working at the time, literally working. And you were and I, you call me out the blue, like going off. And I'm like, wait, what? And so I couldn't even. And at that time, because it was approached that way, of course, I'm going to immediately go on the defense. And I remember calling Jennifer, calling to Mary. Like, <laughs> I was literally breathing like, I can't believe. Like, you know, so like I said, it's interpretation. It's how we interpret it. And also it's, a, it's about approach. And I think that obviously we both had can say that there was a lot of immature things done in the past. And looking at it now, obviously we both have handled that way differently. And I came at you, so I will openly admit, you guys, I came disrespectful because I was hurt and I wasn't articulating why I was hurt in our relationship. And I used this other incident of the ticket sale being the the reason that I'm so upset when really there was underlining things that I hadn't addressed with my friend. And so the way our, I articulated it was masking it through this Coachella and that's, it ticket. It felt like it was something bigger because it was like this the situation, like for you to come to me like that, it did. I remember specifically telling Jennifer, like, I feel like there's some other stuff because and I was really hurt by the way that was approached because it was like, I'm so, yes, we had our smaller issues. But for me, I guess at that point, I was like, the way you were coming to me, you would, you would think that I was just like this. I know. Malicious. And I'm thinking like, because <laughs> you were saying stuff. It, it was it was like attacking, attacking my character. Yes. It was, no, it was. No, it was a direct I can, attack. I can honestly <laughs> say, in retrospect, like when I look back, I'm like, Oh, no, no, no. I definitely will take full accountability. And I mean, that's how we wind up getting to the makeup, though, was right. like us having to have a conversation about that. But I think what happened in response to that first incident, you said that you remember so clearly as it being the, that like, was oh, my I'm done with her. Yeah. It wound up turning into, OK, now I'm not going to be a friend to her. And mind you, you were someone who had been my friend for 20 years. So to take that away. Yeah turned into like okay well i'm not sending you the invitation to my birthday or i'm not gonna you know include you in this thing and so then it well turned, it, sucks it because started turning into this exclusion. you know what it was it was like the timing of it was was sucked because it was like <laughs> we, we stopped being friends everybody was like okay team majority team Maricela, we have to like should we? you know it was definitely that and that went on for a while but within that time birthdays happen mm -hmm. and i'm a big birthday girl everybody know Yes, Team Gemini. My crazy. brother's coming up <laughs> next week. Um, but but I, you have, you are always also included in every birthday plan, everything I'm doing. But the timing in which we were separated, all this stuff was going you, on. I'm planning your birthday. Yeah, with you. you're like going through it with me. And then also your wedding was coming up. So that's what I think led to. Okay, so so I want to get them through um, how I felt during this period. Mm -hmm. Okay not having what you feel like is normal access to your friend, not having your confidant, not having the person who, and this is the one thing that I miss the most about you, was um, I'm crazy with ideas. I consider myself someone who like, <laughs> is not just a visionary, but also I thrive in uh, spaces with people who believe in me. So not having someone who would buy into, on a regular basis, my crazy ass ideas and try to carry them out. And I think that's what you also yeah, appreciate about me. Yeah, we have that in common. Like, we're dreamers. We you will think You know what we should do big. tomorrow? Let's get fireworks. No, 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 no. No, and let's like, get, let's go. Like, we're, we think of. So yeah. I feel like that element of my life was missing where I'm like, dang, I don't have, like, th that uh, person to speak spark my fire like I usually would right it would be a small little flame and you would turn it into like <laughs> a, a, a big old forest fire with me so I, I didn't I feel like that was missing from my life and so going through this period I think the way that I got through it was not just um uh, my partnership with my husband because he saw how bad I was hurting but like um really having to miss you and long for you and really evaluate like what this person means to me and can I see my life not just without this person, but like, can I do the same things? Will I still be able to get through? Will I still be able to accomplish the same things? Because I don't necessarily have this person whose life is mirroring mine before. And like, we were so go getters together. That was one of the things that like I loved about us that I was almost afraid that like, what if I am still a go getter and I still get going, but I don't get going as far as I could go without my go getter partner. That don't make sense to you when you guys play that right. back a few times, <laughs> but like, <laughs> <You're mine. laughs> but like in my mind, I was really thinking like, yes, I could get here, but I could go there with her. And so I didn't like thinking about the idea of, um, not having what I felt like was my partner in crime. And so 
I gave you an ultimatum. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is such a relationship. You guys <laughs> are not gonna believe this ultimatum this woman gave me. While we're not cool, okay, we're still not cool. We have a conversation, her wedding is coming up. And she says, if you don't come to my wedding, <laughs> This is a monument. If you are not, mind you guys, we are not cool. Mind you, my wedding is in Jamaica. Literally, it's in Jamaica. <laughs> so this is, her wedding was on a Saturday. This is like a Sunday, but the week before your wedding. And she tells me <sighs> that if I don't come, and you know what? Because we are so alike, I would have done the same thing because I don't care what we're going through. <laughs> If you miss my wedding, if you miss the birth of my child or something like like these, there's yes, certain these things you don't. Huge. You and can't even though them. I was mad or we were kind of in this state, I still understood the importance of being there because you know what? I value her. I value friendship. And I knew what Madi was for me. Oh, I'm going to cry. Cry. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But I knew that in that space like you, I was missing my ride or die. Like the one who's going to dream with me, the one who's going to like. The one who's going to like believe in like, you know, we that's what our glue was. It was like I was missing that, too. Like, I mean, we have friends, but nobody's like us. Like, you know, <laughs> like Facts. nobody is going to, you know, like nobody's going to go like how we go. Mm -hmm. We understand that. And so when even when we were kind of like having our, our friends separate at the time, I was missing you as well. So when you caught when we when we had the conversation a week before your wedding, um, you that ultimatum, I was like. And it was that Sunday. It was either Sunday or Monday because I remember I only had a few days. I didn't even, I wasn't a part of any of the planning. You had sent out all this yeah. stuff for people to prepare a year before. I wasn't a part that's of how, any of that. That's how petty this was, y'all. Like, like we were not messing with me each to other. Birthdays. I was like, oh, well, I got a wedding coming yeah, up. Yeah, it was she like, no, nah, I didn't wedding. invite her to my birthday. It was crazy insane, this breakup. Yeah, and so we had that conversation and I hung up the phone. And even though I felt a little bit, ugh. I literally put that mess on my credit card and I was like, I have to be there. I, sp I spent like, triple the amount <laughs> and I was so mad but I was there and the way that I came to that ultimatum which I know you shouldn't be given ultimatums in life but like I, I can't remember if it was like Jennifer or Shay because I probably had this conversation with both of them at the time of like okay what would it take for you to start the healing process with you and I was like it wasn't so much that I was like oh she has to do a grand gesture I think as much as it was like I can't go into this phase of my life without her. So if she doesn't start it with me, it's going to feel like I'm on a new TV show without one of the main cast members. And it's mm -hmm. like, I don't want to just add this cast member later because she's not going to have read the scripts. Mm -hmm. Like, it, 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 that's the mm -hmm. only way that I can kind of like put it in my mind. But it was such a rom-com moment mm -hmm. of like, <laughs> you know, when you, when the guy or the girl is like racing to the, you know, gate yes. and they're like, you know, wait, stop, I love you, yeah. I've always loved you. Our relationship turned into a rom-com because she did wind up, even with all of her, you know, anger and immaturity, because mind you, during that space, like things are being said or, you know, mm -hmm. um, we're not talking to each other. And so it's so many people in between both of our it. noses are yeah. up when someone mentions each other. Yeah, and like thing. now all this space and time has passed where like words are even said. I can't remember some of the stuff that we said, but I know we had to, you know, have said stuff that wasn't probably the, the, the nicest about one another. But like, I definitely was like, I'm not effing with her. <laughs> I have nothing That's to hide. Not very nice. I was like, <laughs> everybody knew. I was like, no, I'm not messing with her. <laughs> <laughs> but you coming to the wedding, right? Because I think you were even like, dang, do I got to I didn't even know where I was going to stay. What am I, gonna I was do? like, how am I going to do I was this? like, I don't care. You got to get there. So we're not going to be able to heal this relationship. Yeah. And I think that sacrifice and that is not only what was such a huge gesture, but it felt like okay good ah the love is still there i am still safe with this person i need to just remember who this person is and how she shows up for me because that's really what this relationship was about how it started even how from the beginning to the end you have always remained true to character even when you go through your gemini seasons I have always known that about you. It's just my tolerance became low Different, yeah. when I was hurt. I didn't right. have the same level right. in my love cup filled up with you mm -hmm. when I was being hurt by you. Mm -hmm. And so I now couldn't excuse some of the things that before I would be like, ah, eh, that's okay. Right. And I and not being able to process this at the time or even That's an important part. Understanding this is what was going on for me. 
I didn't handle it the most appropriately. Um, yeah, because in our normal, personal. in our normal, like normal mm -hmm. groove, like we can, you can do some things. I'm like, oh God, that was, or yeah. I could say you were being superficial in a moment or you were being this or whatever. Yeah. But it's like when we, because because we had that, like we were in that space, <laughs> it was, it was just, that just was like, it made it even worse. So I definitely agree with you. That was an important part to note that it's the space in which we're in mm -hmm. and we have to be cognizant of that. But as grown women, I, I mean, not like we were little kids then, but we're diff it's different now because yeah. I have more grace for my friends now because I'm more evolved and I, I get it differently. I don't have to, you know, it's not the same mm -hmm. as it was years ago but no you're right it it took a lot but I, I was gonna say that um the wedding it was it's like it is a gesture and I and I wanted you to know that mm -hmm. I'm gonna make the sacrifice to you for you I'm gonna show you that even though we're in this space in my mind why I purchased that ticket is because I knew that I had to mm -hmm. I wanted to be there for your wedding like I can't miss your wedding you know mm -hmm. and and even at the wedding, it was still a little awkward. But me being mm -hmm. there, I knew it, it was, I'm not going to lie, Mighty, your wedding it was a little <laughs> awkward. But I still. It was because we hadn't, we hadn't really talked. Still, like, talked. And, it and was, I remember Shay him coming yet. up to me and saying, you know what? He put, took me to the side at your wedding and was like, I need you to know that it's, I really appreciate you being here. She has been. My husband? Shay, I know. I did not know he did this. At your wedding. My husband is a brute, y'all. He's, he's a caveman. A, yes. <laughs> like. But he even had to, he thanked me for being there. I oh, feel like wow. I was, he was more grateful because, than you were. Because he because, was having to deal with me. He's like, yeah. please need to come back into her life. I have to deal with he, this craziness. He definitely <laughs> said that. I'm so glad you're here because she really, really, Aww. really needed you here. And I felt like. You know, and me and Shay have our interesting relationship, too. But, yeah. like, I do feel like when he said that, I felt I was so glad that I came to be here for you. Because I, I for feel like sure. if it affected him, I know it was affecting you. And our relationship is bigger than these, you know, than that. And we, we I should be there. But I was going to say, after the wedding, though, is when I felt like as a friend, that vulnerable conversation that we had, mm -hmm. that was when I felt like our relationship relationship has the power to be restored. Is because, and I don't know if you remember this, but it was months after the wedding. It may have been, it was a while, it wasn't even immediately, but you called me in a, like maybe in the middle of the night and you were like, you just kind of just poured your heart out to me and said, <laughs> you know, I just need you to know that like I missed you as a friend. Mm -hmm. You, we I were crying. I literally had never heard you drop in to your vulnerability in that way before that moment. Because I know for you, you're not really an emotional I'm person. Not, I mean, you I'm teach a, love. I teach it, but I'm not a but you're not like, lover. I'm more of the emotional, tapped into my emotions person. But in that conversation, I saw you as a human and not this villain that I painted you out to be. Mm. It was like, I really, I feel like it was a heart to heart, like a true heart to heart, soul sister to soul sister moment. And that is when I knew that you're creating the space for us to purely fall back into this. And obviously it took work after that, but I think that was when I released everything, you know, because mm -hmm. I can honor humility. I can honor when someone owns themselves in a certain way. That to me is the most beautiful part of a person. And so when you did that, you showed me that side. I feel like that was when I was like, now this is where we start to really give back. And I feel like now, you know, that was been, what, a few years ago that since that conversation. Because I feel like now we're kind of back. Since, yeah, no, we're fully back. We're fully back. Um, I can't remember. It was three it was, or it was, four years It was ago? a minute. Yeah, uh, the breakup the was breakup a year. Was long. A year and some <laughs> change. And then the conversation, then your wedding. Then so uh, I would say months after that. So it was like almost a year and a half of breakup. And then we kind of got back after that. I just remember, like, really wanting my friend back right and i think but the important part about today's episode was or is is that um there's steps to one the rebuilding process but then also someone has to give the olive branch someone mm -hmm. has to extend the olive branch and that could be frightening you could be rejected mm -hmm. similar to a romantic relationship like you could put yourself out there and the person be like uh, i don't want you anymore mm -hmm. Stop trying and your feelings can get hurt. And you can also question, well, how often or long do I have to keep in extending myself? Right. Mm -hmm. I think in our situation, though, it was very much like 
this is what I need from you to just get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and once I think I was honest about what I needed from you mm -hmm. and you were able to show up for me, then I was able to open my heart back up to you and really just like share with you um, everything that you meant to me. From that, I think that softened your heart. Yeah. And then you was, were able to mm -hmm. continue to nurture and go back to nurturing the relationship. Mm -hmm. And so part of what I want people to get is the educational component of this, because mm -hmm. I think that we speak often to how do you make someone feel loved mm -hmm. via the five love languages, but not enough around the apology languages. So I'm going to go through these with you and I kind of want you to share with me um, which one stands out to you the most. And then you can kind of speak to which one maybe like you felt like helped our relationship mm -hmm. or what worked for us and it may even look different in how I showed up for you versus right. how like how exes have shown up yeah. for you or family members when they want you back um because everybody has one that means the most to them but mm -hmm. these are the five apology languages I'll go through them so uh expressing regret which means like me saying I'm sorry okay accepting responsibility which occurs when someone uh admits that they were wrong doing what they did along with acknowledging their fault in the situation making restitution which means finding a way to correct the situation okay so this is a common apology scenario if something is lost broken or damaged the apologizer offers uh, a way to replace that thing that they damaged uh the next one is genuinely repenting uh, so it also requires a change in behavior. So they're constantly engaging in the problem solving. Like I did this thing, but this is how I can fix it or compensate for it. Uh, not to make an excuse, but it is a way to try to rectify the damage that was done. And then the last one is requesting forgiveness. This is asking for the person's permission back to love them again, saying like, can we heal? Can you please forgive me for the thing that I did? Which is actually very sorry, different from saying I'm sorry. Because mm. um, I'm sorry is like, hey, I'm apologetic for this. But asking forgiveness is the power is in your hand. You have to make the decision. Because I can apologize all day long and that may not make you feel better. But you have to accept the forgiveness in your heart when someone asks for forgiveness. You have to say, yes, I forgive you. I knight you with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Or no, I don't. I mean, looking at our trajectory or just our pattern or our story, it's it's like this is that's a great. I, first of all, I love the apology um, language. I think this is a very helpful tool in helping to and assisting in navigating this this experience in relationship. But at, you know, at the time, it's it's hard to you know get into a process of a step mm -hmm. because looking back, we had different moments of all these things mm -hmm. that you mentioned, I know. you know, I look at it, it wasn't, like, oh, we kind of did, all yeah, of we kind of did all of it, but in different ways, it wasn't like, like, so for you in that conversation we had before our wedding, I know it took a lot for you to have that conversation and to, and to even ask or require me to come to the wedding, mm -hmm. but I knew, so it's like in some ways there was a, a apology through just action mm -hmm. or, you know, um, so I would say, I don't remember you saying, I don't know if it was like a sorry, was it was it like an I'm sorry thing? I think what stuck out with you was the accountability piece. I don't the think I said I'm sorry. I think you yeah. hearing that I said I was wrong, that you were like, oh, because okay. I felt like you know what it <laughs> so was. You it, know you were wrong. Like I think you needed was, to hear that. Not like I just want to be right, right? It's more about like when you feel something, when you feel hurt by someone, you want to know that they acknowledge that something hurt your feelings or something was, you know, like I think you acknowledge, it's just to be acknowledged. I think I just wanted that acknowledgement and that ownership of it is you acknowledging that you know what, I could have handled that better or I, or I should have done this better or whatever. So I, I, I feel like that made me more open to, you know, showing up to, you know, cause I think I probably made some mistakes too. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't perfect <laughs> in the situation and how I handled some things as well. I think we both did, own that in that conversation you know did you do you feel that way I, I felt like you may not have been aware about the way that you were hurting me until I communicated that yeah exactly and True. I think you can't be you can't fully put it on the other person I think that mm -hmm. oftentimes we because we have built also so much time that there was this like well you should know better you should know that mm -hmm. you're hurting me and even in dealing with romantic relationships it's like no sometimes the person may think that that's okay or not even realize 
that this thing is occurring because it may not hurt them or they may not have even realized what they did. So I think that there has to be this like vocalization yes. of it if you are looking for the acknowledgement and the apology and the reciprocity in someone experiencing or even trying to get to a place of sympathizing with it. You have to, I think, pinpoint it. And so Definitely. what I felt like, oh, you should know you've been doing these things to me. I think I had to address it with you. Mm -hmm. um, and in you hearing things that I was hurt by or in how you handled it, it also gave you an opportunity because that's what communication does for you to be able to say your perspective and then say that you're sorry for making me feel that way. I don't mm -hmm. think that you knew that there were certain things that you were doing in the household when we were living together that was yeah, hurtful or ways I that I felt like that. you didn't really show up for me or that you weren't happy for me. And it, I was able to then have empathy for you when you shared with me the pain you were experiencing in your mm -hmm. own personal life that led to you not being able to show up for me in certain ways. Yeah, because if you have an expectation mm -hmm. of what you need to experience, if I'm not meeting an expectation, you know, I can't. I, and that's another thing with friendship breakups is the expectations is to holding people accountable to mm -hmm. things that they don't even know. And I have had other breakups yes, with other friends where I'm being held accountable and not even knowing that there has been an offense, that there, has, <laughs> there has been some kind of injustice. And I'm just walking around not knowing. Meanwhile, said person is thinking and having all this uh evidence of mm -hmm. things that I'm that I'm not even about. tallying up I'm just existing with you so that's another thing it's 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 like I don't I think you have to make the person aware of what the issue is or what your expect, expectation is and I think we need to also kind of look at our own expectations mm -hmm. you know because sometimes we shouldn't be expecting these people right. to do backflips and stuff yeah, like no, and, some of the expectations throw parties. are outlandish it's outlandish <laughs> and you know mighty you do have high expectations <laughs> yes, so I do. so you know and i do too i'm i'm, I'm being hard <laughs> yes, on you but you we are very similar in that we do have high expectations just because of, we will show up for people but um i just i think that being held accountable to things that you don't know about that can really be an issue in coming in and, and add to the conflict as well so that's a very important thing i think people overlook all the time and i think that people feel like well i i did tell you when i said da 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 da, da or you know you didn't pick up on na, 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 na. and i think we should really sit a friend down and say hey these are some of the things that i am interpreting from your behaviors or in what you said can you speak to this? Am can I you provide some context? Right? Can you yeah. fill this in? Can you help me to understand? Are you going through things? You know, we need to get the you context. Need to ask more questions. Ask more questions. And not just articulate how we feel, but like give them an opportunity to respond. And, you know, hopefully you guys can do it from a non defensive place. But it is about the approach too, because in the first way that I like maybe leashed out to, you know, lashed out at you when I was hurt that was not gonna get the return that I want. Exactly. There was no way that me being um, rude or disrespectful to you would get you to be like, oh, Mari must be hurt mm -hmm. with how I've been treating her, mm -hmm. right? So it was more about like having to come at you from a place of heart mm -hmm. versus ego mm -hmm. that would get you to then be open to having that kind of dialogue with me mm -hmm. where it would be like, okay, I can see your point of view. I can see... Mm -hmm. maybe what you're coming from I didn't realize that at the time mm -hmm. but I also think like as much as the breakup hurt um one I think being in the relationship industry and taking romantic relationships and love and purpose mate and all this like so seriously I didn't extend myself the same type of even grace maybe that I would in our relationship that I would that, that I do in others right and that's another thing I think, you know, our friendship, sometimes we don't give the same mm -hmm. with our man or with our significant other. We'll give them 20 all kind times of, to make up to know, us. <laughs> they, can do, they can be doing the craziest things and we just be like, take them back. Or, and then, but, the, but our friends, we don't give, offer that same grace. I've yeah. experienced that a few times and I'm just like, and, and yeah, that, I, I think that we have to really, really look at how, each we have to value the relationship friendships and romantic mm -hmm. relationships i think it's and because say you know if you with a man or a woman and they you don't know how long they're gonna last yeah. but the lasting power of a friend is way different 
you know, a lot of times. And yeah. maybe I could speak to that because I actually really have really long lasting friendships. Yeah. These are years in the game, you know, and they have outlasted a lot of relationships. So, you know, I, I do think that we need to value them in a similar way. So what do you think has been the um, secret sauce to making lasting relationships? Because for people who go in and out of girlfriends or in and out of, you know, groups or um, don't hold on to relationships as long, what do you think has been that thing that has allowed for your relationships to gel so long? Mm, what is the thing? I mean... You know, all the relations, relationships are different. I mean, I have high school friends that I'm still friends with. I have sorority sisters that I, we're still very close. Um, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think of what's the glue. I think it's, um, it's maybe me in knowing that, like, these people provide so much value to my life. And like how you said, when I wasn't in your life, like, mm -hmm. I, you were missing that element. I think it's knowing that these people are are my family they are helping me to get like the, it's a, the support system that is going to really su help sustain my life and knowing that trusting that I think it's me honoring that like that's and then operating from a place of knowing that these people are important to me you value what you value you're going to treat well mm -hmm. you're going to hold on to like maybe they make a mistake but you're going to hold on to it because you know the value of it i really can't stress enough the value because i, I think people don't value it in the same way which is why you can let it go or you can just mm -hmm. say whatever i'm cool off her i'm cool off him you got to really value it and see you know and let it it has been such a value in my life i can't ignore that i can't ignore what friendships have done for me in my life so if I had to say one thing I think it's just operating from a place of like understanding that we're all human that we make mistakes that no one has it all together and that you know I don't need to be defensive when working through a situation like I think from the breakups that I've had you know when we come back together we realize the bigger picture and the bigger picture is we're bigger than this mm -hmm. you know operating from that place like that to me is out of all the relationships, whether we fight or whatever, we come back to home, which is we're going to be, you know, like this, we got, we're we in this for real. Like we're going to really be be there for each other. We're going to go through life together. And it really sounds like a romantic relationship, but it's the <laughs> same. It is the same concepts, though. It is. Like, because I, I have another friend, Shannon. Shout out to Shannon. Um, we <laughs> had a breakup, too. And we came back and realized so much of like, what? all this for what? Mm -hmm. You know? And it's like, but... Who did you have the breakup with first? You. That taught you how to how to how to, be, how to show up for <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> I prepared you for the streets. You, you of did. Breakups, you actually okay? prepared me for all the future breakups <laughs> because our breakup was the biggest. <laughs> yes. You know, and I have another breakup. We won't speak on that, but you know, <laughs> that one's still unresolved. But anyway, I I will say that you know, all of this has taught me that you know if if you come at it from a place of like, you know, we're bigger than this, we can get through it, then. I think that that's what for me has helped me help made me hold on to those friends, you know, and and not everybody's a great friend, though. I don't think this applies to every friend. Yeah. I think you have to use your discernment on who's who's supposed to be in your life and who's not. But the ones that are will stay and they will be there for you through your breakups with your your man or your woman. And they'll they'll be worth it in the end. I think also, too. So I think it's like this other element of one forgiveness and then two, um, a speaking to like strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. because when you think about what someone means to you, does just like we would relationship, right? Does the good outweigh the bad? The bad? And is the bad so bad that it's going to take me down with them? Because mm -hmm. I think that's when a relationship becomes toxic. If someone mm -hmm. is uh, just not even like, let's just say someone's not reciprocating, but like actually hurting you or doing things that are extremely unhealthy and you show up in the friendship not liking uh how the person views you, but also how you feel about yourself in their company. Um, what they bring out of you. What they bring their, out of you. influence, yeah. Um, how they show up for you. And and even you noticing yourself not being the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you have you definitely have to assess, like, okay, am I in an unhealthy relationship? Mm -hmm. But I think that the forgiveness part comes in 
when it's like, okay, is this a forgivable offense? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the only way for relationships to have sustainability because even uh, in my marriage, he is the most incredible man in the world, but he ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, can I get through this weakness? Is this weakness so bad that it's going to, you know, destroy us? Mm -hmm. Can I tolerate it? Can I accept it and love him despite it and through it? And I think it's the same thing with friendships. Can I love her through this thing? Mm -hmm. Even though she did this hurtful thing, mm -hmm. even though we had these hurtful words or these hurtful experiences, is there a world that exists with us working towards getting back to where we were? And I think it takes two people mm -hmm. for any relationship to say, I'm gonna do my part in the healing work for this relationship and you're gonna do your part. And you can't make it happen if only one of you want to do it, but one of you has to do the olive branch. I think mm -hmm. what a person has to speak up, right? Cause you yeah. could have stayed and you're, you could have not shown up to my wedding. Mm -hmm. You could have told me hell to the no and I would have had to accept that. And I would have had to make a decision. Okay, do I try to make this relationship work regardless mm -hmm. or let her go? Mm -hmm. um, and we have to, you know, we have to, sometimes come to those terms but I think you can't give up on the relationship if you do want to work it out with someone without at least trying because mm -hmm. then it's guaranteed failure but your energy of like trying and and I think when you you know when we I don't even know how the conversation ha happened before like who did we text each other I don't even know how that conversation happened but whoever took the first step is what I'm trying to get to I, I think I called you yeah um, because I was at that point I was just like because you knew your wedding was coming up and you knew that <laughs> I, was like, I wasn't What do invited? I have to lose? If you don't right. come to my wedding, you don't come to my wedding. Yeah. But at least I know I tried. Yeah. And I think Shay pushed me to do that. And I think um, Jennifer was tired of hearing me like yeah. <laughs> cry about you. And so yeah. was Shay. So I think um, he was just like, dude, just call her. Like, you know right, you want her there. That's what I'm saying. So it takes one person. Like, you, some person, one person has to extend the olive branch. Yeah. And I think that's an important, important part. And that's so hard to do when you're in your ego. Correct. When you're not... You know, it's something about like when you hold a lot of people hold on to things, they, they like operate from this egotistical place mm -hmm. and it's not allowing you to experience the next level of it. You can prevent yourself from going deeper in a relationship by that, too. Yeah. So the same thing applies. Like you had to take that first step. You got to be humble, you know, and that's also hard to do, especially in that state we were in. Yeah. And you got to come at it like, hey you know what, I need you, I, I miss you, and I need you there. You know what I'm saying? I think you're hitting on something, too, because for the humility piece, um, well, I mentioned earlier, like, try not to be defensive. There is still going to be a part of you that wants to, like, in the conversation, justify. Mm -hmm. Well, this is why I did what I mm -hmm. did, and it didn't happen like that. And you want to re count this like timeline mm -hmm. of what you remember versus what the other person remembers. And I think that you guys have to release that release the power of you remember it differently than I did if you saw mm -hmm. that Didi was like okay you kind of got a different memory than I did mm -hmm. but there was not this like serious banging on and mm -hmm. like oh now I'm mad again because I'm reliving this and it wasn't exactly you know recounted the way that you guys you know the way that you you thought that it was to everyone like you have to release that part and really be goal oriented with is like, <laughs> what do we need to do to heal? It's really about what's the goal what's here. What's the goal? <laughs> like, do we, and also, do we have a common goal? Like, if, <laughs> let's, we should have a shared goal. Like, even in even in talking and conversation, I feel like important tools that you can use are like, hey, I want to start this co conversation with this. My intention is this. Yep, my intention. Your what is your intention? Just start that off so you set the intention and the tone of the conversation. After that place, you start building on it. Okay, you say something. Then I could say, okay, I heard you say this. What mm -hmm. I interpret is this. Then you can now say, well, actually, no, I meant this. Or yes, you're right. So you also feel heard, seen. Yep. And then I can say the same. And then you create a space where it's a safe space for you guys to have this kind of dialogue mm -hmm. to now foster better communication. Yep. Like, obviously, we're evolved. You know, this is this is <laughs> not, everybody doesn't come. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm better than anyone. I'm saying. No, we're not. We, this is a process, but this is years we and years. We want you guys of, to get to, yeah. this, to this ability, though. Right. No to, matter to get to that place. how long maybe the friendship is, because I don't want it to be based off of the time. Right. I want it to be based on, I want to actually have better relationships yes. and nurture relationships. I want that to be, if that's something that you care about and mm -hmm. that moves you, that you want to start building more friendships or even, you know, expand your social circle, then you are going to have to massage relationships mm -hmm. and it's not always going to be pretty. Yeah. You have to nourish them. It, it's like a, you have to really 
nourish it, massage it, work on it. It's a process. You got to really know going into it that it's going to be ups and downs. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard. Somebody's going to be on their cycle. Somebody's going to (laughs) be having an attitude about something. Somebody just broke up with somebody. Like it's always going to be issues that also will affect Mm -hmm. how they approach you in their life. And I really think this conversation is really helpful for me because I'm also remembering like, wow, I I was going through a lot at Mm -hmm. that time. Like, and you know, and then, and it sucks that you felt so unsupported or so, you know, that you felt this way but at that remember, time. And I'm going to parallel it to partnership, though, in living with you. I was the closest thing to you in proximity, yeah. plus in proximity, in yeah, even for sure. relationship. So who did you who do you take that on? You take it mm-hmm. out on your partner. You yeah, know, we were true. friends and roommates. True. You take it on the, pro- the closest per- person closest to you. Yeah. So if you're slamming the door, you're slamming the door on me, even mm-hmm. if it wasn't about me that day. Mm-hmm. You're slamming it on me. Or mm-hmm. if you are upset about something like I'm the person in the living room, like taking that on. So there was some form of this like transference of Mm -hmm. emotion and you know being I think in a in in a and not everybody will be living together to have these experiences with friends but I think that if you can operate from a place of more sensitivity to what that person is going through it'll be a lot easier to go through that um you know those these these hardships and the person like on my end being aware that you if you are going through something and aware of how that may impact another person like i it's an awareness part, like i don't think having, we know so I, that's what i'm saying all this made me yep. more aware even in this conversation years later many years later is that we have to have a better awareness of ourselves and how we affect people the closest people to us i don't think we i don't think majority of us know how our energy affects mm-hmm. others mm-hmm. and you know everybody in 2023 is calling themselves a, you know an empath and this yes. and this and this um but i'm like how y'all empath is in emotionally unavailable and not like anyway anyway um, <laughs> that's another podcast that's episode another podcast. ladies and gentlemen but like <laughs> for us to be you know to, 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 if if you are with someone who lacks the um awareness you know this is this is why the communication piece is so important because we don't know how we're affecting someone in that day. And I have like this rule about um, if someone cuts me off, even on the freeway, um, I tend not to honk my horn. If they like do something, they, they cut, you know, they cut me off and they merge over. And my husband's like, honk at them. And I'm like, no, you don't know what they're going, what they're through. going through. What if I honk and then that sets him off and then he's mean to his, you know, mm-hmm. kid. And then the kid winds up pinch, pinch, punching someone at school. And then, the, you know, the kid winds up you know like it, it turns into this like domino mm-hmm. effect in my mind or at least the way that like I rationalize this mm-hmm. and I know it could be silly but you don't know how your energy affects someone mm-hmm. and so it's the same thing in in friendship because these relationships and these bonds really are personal and mean something to you mm-hmm. they sometimes we will take things personal that aren't even about us mm-hmm. And make it about us. And mm-hmm. I think, too, if you guys haven't gathered, some of this was, even though she was going through something, I, because I felt like the role in my life with her, I was very self-involved in, you know, these experiences that I felt like, you know, were being done to me. And some of them were, like, very hurtful. But what I did was, like, compiled this, you know, list. And I've even experienced this with other friends where this they list is compiled list. Right. against me. Yeah. That I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't even know about these things. <laughs> But I also realized, like, haven't had those breakups with those friends to experience how to go through it and handle it. And I just don't think that we give love to the people who love us unconditionally the same way we do to people who mm-hmm. love us with conditions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely. You know, and our and our and our friends, the it it is family. If something were to happen, um, heaven forbid, my let's just say my husband were to leave me tomorrow. Guess who I'm stuck with. <laughs> the friends the friends the so friends. <laughs> i will be going back to y'all like uh can you take me back in dd <laughs> right. i'm like i'm gonna put you through my program to be find love okay <laughs> with relationships like in romantic relationships at uh, that mirroring friendships right i feel like we have lost sight of even you know how to let new people in how to be more trusting how to create friends 
this is why just like I would tell you how to slide in someone's DM or hop on Bumble and make the first move. Mm. The same thing applies when it comes to friendships, right? Bumble BFF, Bumble for Friends is an opportunity for you to grow your network. If you're looking for, you know, uh, building your social circle and making platonic friends, that's an awesome place for you to go. And you and me, we're super social. We're Mm going to speak to any and every one but using this kind of app is great so that that way if you you know if you're not able to be out in the streets every day and like the way that we collect (laughs) people (laughs) you're able to use an app like bumble that allows you from the comfort of your own home to like hey i'm open i'm available do you want to be my friend and with this episode, we're able to share with people how to not just make the friend, but also keep the friend and keep restore the, friend. the friendship should yeah. something happen. I love that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you, you're, your friends are a huge part of um, your esteem. And you have to, yes, mm-hmm. love yourself through the ups and downs and even when they're not there for you. But the health of your relationships and how they pour into you and how you pour even into yourself so that your cup overflows into them Mm -hmm. um, has a lot to do with also your well-being because Mm -hmm. romantic relationships can't be your everything. Well, that that's that was my whole point in the beginning. It's like we have to value that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the value has if you don't value that, then and that's another thing. Here's another thing. I, you know, having a breakup with another friend who didn't value Mm -hmm. friends. Sometimes you're misaligned. Sometimes we we have different value systems, and that's also a harsh. Ira- you think harsh. you're something to someone. I that thought you're I not, was something yeah. something to her, and I clearly was not anything of what I thought. She's like, oh, this is just a situation shit. This was this was just <laughs> that's it. And so she said, you thought I was feeling you, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and and that's another thing you have to. I think I believe in order to maintain and nourish and have good friends, you have to make sure that you guys are aligned mm-hmm. in terms of values and what we think for sure friendships are like. There's a G code that I think that people don't mm-hmm. honor. Oh, there's a G code. There's a G code in, you know, it's just codes that you, there's a definition of loyalty. Our definitions have to be the same because sometimes when and those we've got to talk about the codes though. So I think that yeah, you have to you talk, talk about, about the codes and agree on the codes. Certain things you shouldn't And if the different. person shows you they don't operate by the same, same codes, code, yeah. you also have to look at that too. Exactly. Before you elevate their status in your life. You're right. I know what you're getting at. <laughs> some people have warned <laughs> so-called right. friends that other people aren't their friends the way that they think. You know what? You're absolutely right. And I've learned that I, those type of people don't shouldn't be in my life. We have to have the same shared um, friendship values for sure. Um, definitely. I think that in looking at values, I want you guys to understand that like, your your friend can have permission to be someone different than you, appreciate different things from you. But when it comes to the value system, the reason why that's important is because it really embodies like the character of yourself and the things that you honor and um, from honor, from worship, from the things that you respect and uphold. And I think that when those things are misaligned, you can try to excuse Mm -hmm. the behaviors that maybe are hurtful or the things that you feel like, "Mm, well, let me not be judgy. But if those are their values, it's only a matter of time before they do it to you. Mm -hmm. And we will excuse behaviors oftentimes because we're like, well, I'm the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, no, 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 we've seen this person do this to other people. It was just a matter of time before it happened to you. Mm -hmm. And that did happen. Certain things were done to me that I was like, she going to do this to you, girl. And then he was like, no, 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 no. But I'm going to love her through it. It won't happen to me because I have so much love to give. I'm going to show her how good of a friend I can be to her. Therefore, getting her to fall in love with friendship. Mm -hmm. Um, Which I, one of the things that I love about you is your love for stray dogs. But like, (laughs) I don't think that every single one can be nurtured back to health. Yeah, and I didn't know that until you you get hurt. Like, I didn't know. I thought that I could show. I, I thought as a friend, how I viewed myself as a friend, I thought that I could pour into someone and be and show them that, hey, look at this value. Look, look at the value that I am as a friend to you in hopes that they – it was more so like I knew that I would I gave more in that situation. I wasn't looking for the same things from her. I just w- felt bad for her life experiences and the things that she had went through with different women that I was like, I want to show her something different. Mm-hmm. And I do. I'm, I'm very um, big hearted in that way. I just I have all these friends, you know, 
I feel like I'm around really dope women. I mean, all my friends are amazing. I have the best like support system ever. And so I guess, and because like me, like me and you, we both have merged these groups. And yeah. then I've seen our friends become, you know, do things together. And I, I love that. I love to be, love that I've connected that. So I didn't, in the same vein, I was thinking, okay, you can kind of come in and, and, and get all this good friendship juju that we have to <laughs> offer. And not knowing that that person was still at a level in their process where they couldn't see the value in it. Even with that, they still operated from the same place. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't have the effect that I mm. thought it was because in the end I realized like, dang, this person really isn't my friend. So you got to like, like we said in the beginning, you got to know when to let people go. And you know, sometimes your friend, those people are not, certain people are not meant to be friends, yeah. you know? And as hard as that was for me, cause I still deal with it. It was, it was very hard for me to accept that. I didn't want to accept that, which is why I kept her around for so long. Cause I thought that, I just thought that we were, it was cooler than, I, I didn't think that the reality of what we were, I didn't want to believe that that was true. Even though I know you saw it, it was, I still believe that there was a chance and. And you needed to see it for yourself. I had so to like, see it for myself. I don't yeah. want you guys to feel like to, in hearing this, I don't want you to think that like, you know, she should have just blindly like believe me it was like a bunch of like offenses that she yeah, needed to few. experience and see for herself because there's nothing that i could say or nothing that i could do someone has to experience that the same mm -hmm. way like if you're dating a dude or i'm mm -hmm. dating a dude and it's like no matter you got to go through the trenches for yeah. you're not gonna listen you're not gonna mm -hmm. leave him so it's the same thing with friendships and we can be as women i feel like our species in particular mm -hmm. can be very territorial yeah. and we want to protect our friend or we see like you know, infiltrators and you and I collect friends. Like we make <laughs> a lot of friends. Yeah, I do. But the difference between me and you, when it comes to like how we uh, decide who our friends are is like, I have, I, I believe to be Levels. more of a tier system. Yes. yes, here we go with this. <laughs> so like, you don't just come in day one getting top tier one benefits <laughs> and you operate from like, no, 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 no. I don't care if she's, Tier three, she still gets all the same benefits of tier one. And that to me is not enough of a trust foundation built to be able to give your heart fully to someone, to be able mm -hmm. to sacrifice the things you're willing to sacrifice, mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, I, I don't think you should be walking the burning sands for someone mm -hmm. who ain't even like done. Who hasn't put in the work. Who put it, hasn't put in the work well, because yeah. they're not going to value it. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when we let people come in and we start them at this high level of intimacy, mm -hmm. this high level of vulnerability and closeness that and I acceptance. think has to be steps. You take a step, I take a step, the same mm -hmm. way in romantic relationships. It's not you take one step and I take 10. And because your heart is so big that you feel like I can give you all the love and that love will penetrate you because you're a mm -hmm. penetrator. You mm -hmm. like love to love and you love to see what blossoms from that. Mm -hmm. And I love that thing about you. And I think that's also too how you're able to create and nurture the relationships that you have had because you will take in new friends in the mm -hmm. same way. Whereas in me, mine's more like a boot camp, mm. and <laughs> mine is more like, okay, drop down, give me 20. I'm gonna do 20 push ups. You're gonna do 20 push ups. We're gonna carry this wood over here. And then if you make it to the finish line and I make it to the finish mm -hmm. line, you get to move up to the tiers. Yeah. And so it just. You want people to jump through hoops for you. It's too, because I'm gonna <laughs> jump through hoops for you. Yeah. And I feel like because I know how I like to show up, mm -hmm. I think that there does have to be some level of it being earned. Absolutely. And I, you know what? It's not like I'm just collecting friends, like, oh, I just met you at the grocery store. Hey, girl. <laughs> Come kick it with us. No, yes, let, it, let let's be clear, First guys. Off, yes, you would. No, because she the last podcast she let had she had y'all believing foods. that I let some random homeless person um yeah. that was uh, uh hiking with us yes. at Rangan Canyon. No. You, it, you do the same thing with friends. No. <laughs> Dang. See, see, now this is becoming something else. Because no, <laughs> this person had been in my life for years, okay? This was not just an overnight friend, microwave pop, popcorn friend. Popcorn this was a friends. person that had been around for years. There had been a plethora of things that I overlooked, but I was like, no, kind of giving more hood passes a little here and there. And then until I realized, like, okay, no, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. But I do think that my big heart allows me to see people and invite them in my circle or my 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 vortex. However, over time, it's going to show whether you're a staying if you, if you have staying power. And 
I've been fortunate enough to have so many friends that have had that have mm -hmm. staying power that have showed me that my big heart led to this. And this is why you're even in my life now, because I was able to open up to you. And then that turned to years and years and years and years. And now we've gone through marriages and babies and now mm -hmm. we're here. So as much as I, I do think that you're right, it does need to be earned. That's very that's a very key thing I've learned from that particular breakup that we're talking about mm -hmm. is that I think the friendship needs to be earned. Um, and you not, I think friendship needs to be earned. You don't just give anybody that title mm -hmm. without them actually showing you in action that they are really, truly your friend. And that's, that's where I'm at with all of this. Like, I think with my, you definitely earned it. Yes. I earned <laughs> you it. earned it. I think with, uh, cause we, we both mirror in like having, you know, breakups that have been hurtful and mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of breakups, but the ones that we have had have stood out because mm -hmm. we love our friends. Mm -hmm. I think what stood out to me and my biggest lesson with a breakup that I had with a different friend, um, was that what I, what she was to me was not what I was to her. Mm. And remember how we were talking about alignment earlier. Yeah. Um, it's not so much that our values were different, but I think that it was more in a uh, perspective of what a friend is mm -hmm. and what a friend means mm -hmm. and how we prioritize friendship mm -hmm. in our lives was very different yeah. where because I interpreted behaviors or, um, uh, you know, you're doing the grandiose gestures, you're going through, you went through the boot camp and you passed. I'm thinking that, of course, I mean, you know, something to you because you mean so much to me. And it's more of like, well, no, that was just her way of being. The love was not there to like actually work through what we needed to work through. And I think that that was hurtful because I'm like, I am master breaker upper now with my friends. And so I thought like <laughs> I would be able to do the same thing like what you yeah. do with Shannon, where I would like show up in this way. And she would tell me how much she loved me and she missed me and she wanted you, me back. Right. And I didn't get that. I didn't get um, any of the apology languages that I, I didn't mm -hmm. get. Like I, what I was looking for from the apology languages, um, I didn't get that. And I think that was also eye-opening mm -hmm. is that sometimes like in listening to someone not articulate the love that you have for them and it be you know reciprocated back you're not hearing the articulation of oh dang you love me the way that I love you mm -hmm. which is what I got from you so of course I'm doing this comparison of like okay I'm ready tell me how much you love me and it didn't come but my, <laughs> and I was like why <laughs> why lord why has thou forsaken me yeah because you you gotta it's all about it's also too about interpretation because how you need to be loved it's like love languages right we have to meet people where they are and love them the way they need to be loved and then you need to receive in the way like you can't I think maybe you needed more of the the theatrics with it because you're gonna get that from me because I'm emotional and I'm dramatic and all mm -hmm. that you're gonna get the tears even though I don't want to give you the tears but <laughs> um you you would get that and that makes you feel loved you can have that expectation that everybody's gonna love you in this or, or have that display in the same way maybe it's a little bit different but maybe it's still that's her way that's how she is able to love you it's not going to be in the the demonstration that you want all the time I think we have to just manage our expectations we have to manage you know manage that too in addition to like you have your ways of what you want to see and how you want to feel in these apologetic conversations mm -hmm. but that person their personality may not be that they're not the Azure G's of the world you know it's the, it's a different style too because I mean I, I think that you have to open up to a different way that they can display that love for you. I think it's hard for me to reconcile if I love you at let's I'm gonna give it's easier for me to scale things. If okay. I love you at like 70%, like let's just say like my voltage power, okay. right? Like this is a charged battery. I love you at 70. Um, and you're like, okay, well, I only love you at 40%. I only have 40% of love to give you, but I still love you, but it's only 40%. I think for me that's a hard pill for me to swallow that I cannot accept mm. if my percentage is like way higher. Mm. And it's not that it needs to look the same like mine. Like I don't need to 
okay, I did you this solid there before you need to do this exact solid for me back. I think it does need to be um, articulated. I do think it needs to be um, shown through uh, various actions of sacrifice when mm. it comes to friendship. Because okay. if we're not sacrificing and everything in order to be my friend is convenient, mm -hmm. it's not. It, we're not, not really friends. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I feel the same way about lovers. Like, no, where's the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. And so I know I am a... I, I know I'm over the top in this thinking, mm -hmm. but similar to you, because I have manifested these kind of relationship in my mm -hmm. life with extra people who show up extra and I'm able to be my extra self. I think that I know what capacity I thrive best at. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard for me to settle for a low voltage. I think of love when I need over the top love. What That's if that where person, I thrive What if best. that person feels in their right that they were like, I, feel like, you know, they have a different interpretation, different interpretation in where they feel like they were giving you that, but you just didn't receive no, no, so it. It's, in that. It's, so it's not so much about, so, so, okay. So in, in the behaviors being demonstrated and the sacrifices were made. Yes. They were showing me at this high level but the sentiments were not there. And I think mm. that I interpreted the behaviors as, oh, you really do love me hella hard. But it was like, no, this is actually more of a situationship. But just because I'm spending the night or I'm cooking for, you know how like when mm. you're in a situationship, it's like, but I'm not as committed as you think that I am because I never profess my commitment to you. Yeah, we're doing the boo stuff, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're in a relationship. And so I misinterpreted the bit. And so my situation is different. I misinterpreted the behaviors of this incredible way that the person was showing up for me for, oh, the love must be there. You must love me hardcore. So a girl could do this a all girl the time. And she's like, no, he <laughs> loves me like he did this. And then in actuality, <laughs> He, he wasn't really, he's like, this is just a situation shit. What you mean? I mean, you cool, but yeah. And I that's mean, what I got from the friend. It was like, oh, you cool, but I don't really love you as hard as like, and I think that was hard for me because I'm like, oh, no, no, no. In order for us to make this relationship work, I need this hardcore love. And I can get that you can show up with the actions, but that's still not enough for me. I need to know. I need you to profess it. I guess I just, I, you know, it's like meeting people where they're at. I, I What I've learned in a lot of these breakups and stuff is also like we got to meet people where they're at, what they're even, even capable of doing. Like some people are not capable of, because we operate at a, at a more higher emotional level, mm -hmm. like we're more in tune with our emotions, we're more communicative, we're more expressive. Like talking to you is like talking to me. Like I'm just, mm -hmm. we can just bounce back and forth all day, but I know that there are certain people I can't do that with. It's yeah. a certain level that they can go. And it's not a good or a bad thing. It's just everybody's at a different place. And I, it's just the expectation of having people show up and be this, you know, do all these things. <laughs> it, and, and maybe I've been on the, other, on the other end of that as well. So I'm probably a little bit more like not triggered, but just the managing expectations part is really something that I, I feel like most people need to manage that. You know, they need to measure it and they need to look at where everybody is when you're having this expectation. That's just something that I don't know. It, it could apply or could not, but it's just something that came up for me when you were saying that. No, I think you're right about the managing expectations. Um, because maybe that person had a different interpretation of how maybe you affected them during that time. So it wasn't like this, you know, I just feel like everybody is going to show it in a different way. Everybody has a different emotional capacity or and personality and not all that, not all of them are going to look the same. You know, you'll get the satisfaction from me talking to me. You'll get all that, you know, and your experience with friend breakups is us. We're like the, you are like my yeah. blueprint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we had a, we had a really beautiful process in that. And I think I thought, Oh, every breakup's yeah. supposed to be like this. Right. Um, and so you're right. It's not the same. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean the love is less. It just means it's different. People are going to come with a different, you know, I'm just saying something to think about as we are like reflecting on all yeah. this, because we also, this is also a healing conversation. Mm -hmm. This conversation is, is cathartic in a way that we can express all these things, a lot of pinned up things that we've, you know, had in the past, but it's also like a way for us to have a new perspective moving forward. Yeah. And I just feel like it's, it's making me think of like how we operate with each different friend. Like we have so many people to draw from so yep. many different personalities. Like and each person's going to show up for they're going to show they're going to have different needs. Yeah. It's and like maybe everybody kids. is not going to give you that, but that it, it, that's OK, mm -hmm. you know, and I think you've also with this person that you're talking about, you found your peace with that mm -hmm. as well, too. And I think that's important to note is that finding peace with 
where people are. Yeah, I as think long as, that was the biggest lesson right. for me probably then. It's exactly. Was, and, I, and I do feel that you have peace with it because I've acceptance. known this. I have to accept it. Like, okay, I'm, I am accepting where we're at and what or the I'm, I, I have to accept that you may not love me at this voltage mm -hmm. um, or be able to express it right in the way that I wanted it expressed um, mm -hmm. and you don't feel it that way uh, and that's okay I have a plethora of relationships that do love me and I love myself enough to still mm -hmm. know that it's not so much about like where I'm lacking but more about um it not being a necessity this this mm -hmm. validation or this um yep. extra piece doesn't necessarily equate to a certain level of happiness for mm -hmm. me and I think that is you know what I was supposed to take away from that because I did I was like oh we're gonna walk off into the sunset right. again like you and I and you have and, this whimsical view but, and it's that, like but I haven't had a lot of a lot of friendship breakups mm -hmm. and so I think just like in romantic relationships if you don't have a lot of Experience. experiences you're going to think that like it's going to be just like that one whether it be good or bad and it's like oh no, no you actually have to go through a variety of mm -hmm. these to understand them so let this be a lesson for you guys as well one breakup doesn't equate across the board to yeah. all breakups sometimes you are going to have to understand your position in people's life and it mm -hmm. may not feel good or look the way that you anticipated mm -hmm. um and you have to be okay with that too. But you may get those wins other times where it's mm -hmm. like, yes, we were able to restore. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that you don't have those conversations. You still go for the restoration, even if the outcome isn't guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know when you're going to get that win or that, you know, that friend back. But your outcome was you got the peace. With your outcome with me, we got the love. We got the tears together. We got the hugs. We're back on track with another person. Like, you know, like in my other experience with Shannon, like we're back mm -hmm. on track. Like I'm so grateful that I had the breakup because – that actually made it stronger. You know, I think that what back to your question of what are the things that you think is the glue? I think I would say forgiveness, understanding, acceptance and really love like it has to be love behind all this because mm -hmm. that's what makes it all work. So those would be the key things that I think keeps long lasting friendships question in the friendship that you didn't get the closure with you didn't mm -hmm. get to have a conversation mm -hmm. um to make up how are you working through the releasing of that because there's some people out there that are like yeah i just have to let this person go i can't have that conversation yeah. or i haven't what advice would you give to them in situations like that because mm -hmm. it was hard for you it's still hard for me because it's still it's it, it's not it's unresolved i have my peace with you and shannon i feel like <laughs> You guys were like, yes, we did it. We did it, Joe. Um, we but did it, Joe. <laughs> we did it. We did it. No, but um, and this situation, I'm not gonna lie. Um, maybe there is some some ego still involved. Mm. Maybe if I have to be 100 100 percent honest, I feel so offended, and I feel so like what? Like, like I it was certain little things that were done. I'm just like, I can't believe that. And I think. It's been, what, maybe a, a year now. Well, coming up on a year. Oh, wow. um, yeah, since we've had no communication. And this is someone who was like, you know, my girl. And I would say that, um, you know, I, I'm kind of over my shit. And not that it, see, I'm not trying to do the blame game, but I feel like there was so many, there was an offense that occurred that I'm still kind of like, I just, I really thought I was more to that person. So to see that they're okay with, you know, not having the conversation, kind of letting it, letting it go. I think it's giving me this feeling of like, okay, we've accepted this space, and I don't know if. Well, why wouldn't so in this situation, right? Because I want people at yeah. home who are like maybe have that person that they're like teetering mm -hmm. with. Yeah. This is why would we not extend the olive branch? So in the way that right we did, or the way that you sat down with Shannon, I think I'm still. Why hurt. would you not? Maybe hit that person up and like, hey, let's have a sit down. Because girlfriend. of the offenses and what they did, I'm still hurt. I'm so hurt at how they approached our friendship. I'm really, really dealing with the fact that, wow, I really have let you in my life in a certain way. I tried to honor our friendship and give you, <laughs> gift you friends, <laughs> literally. And I've, and I, but I'm so hurt at the fact that, you know, that this is how you would play this. And so, 
if that's ego, if that's me, I'm kind of in the hurt place with it. Mm-hmm. I'm not, that's not to say that it may not be a conversation, you know, in the future. It just means that I am still processing, you know, if you're not really my friend, if this is evidence of you not really being my friend, then maybe this is something I should let go, you know, as well. Cause they've clearly let go. Their actions have showed that. So I think it's the acceptance part of like, even without talking to the person, finding my own resolve in it and and just maybe accepting that this may be the fate of us. I'm open to a conversation. I'm not ready to extend an olive branch. If, if, if an olive branch was sent out to me, I would absolutely be like, yeah, I, w- I mm-hmm. like I said, I told you before, I honor humility, I honor vulnerability, and even with men, okay? <laughs> I, if you come, and you you say sorry and you drop in and you you're vulnerable. <laughs> I, you may you're have like, okay. I'm like okay. I believe I, you. Okay, come here. <laughs> no, but in the same way, this is so good because I I'm seeing so many like comparisons to romantic relationships and and platonic friendships. It's it's really the same elements. I think you know I'm I would be open to having a conversation with that person. I just I feel like I I need to get past like my feelings being hurt. So. Okay, I'm hearing this, and mm-hmm. it made me think about my situation, and I'm gonna mirror it to your situation. Okay, my mom brought something to my attention mm-hmm. in um, my breakup with a different friend, being um, and my mom saying like maybe you didn't show up for her the way that she needed. So even though she was doing these grand things for you that you felt like was serving you, maybe you didn't show up as good of a friend to her. Mm. And I and that was a hard pill for me to swallow because I was like, okay, maybe I didn't. There's these all these crazy things that I can go through a list of, of things that I think that I did. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that it necessarily registered to that person. Right. Maybe they did not value me. And so that's why I got, you know, I, I loved them at a 70% and they only loved me at, mm-hmm. you know, 30, 40. And there is that possibility of like, dang, maybe I need to circle back and ask like, how can I show up for you better? Mm-hmm. I think in your situation and what it makes me think of is it's so offensive because you were the better friend, the completely way everything. better friend. <laughs> I, I'm sitting here. And, and that person yeah. wasn't. And so I think it's hurtful for you even more because you're like, dang, I did all these things and you weren't that great of a friend to me, but I gave you the VIP benefits package. You definitely got the VIP package. And I think that makes it hurtful. Kind of like when we're dating a guy who like, he ain't got mm-hmm. his shit together. He ain't even that cute. And, you know, we feel like we were settling for him, but we gave him a chance anyways. And then he like goes to us or throws us to the side and we're like, I didn't even want you. Mm-hmm. I let you came up with me mm-hmm. and you don't even appreciate what you had. Mm-hmm. I think it's the same thing when it comes to friendships. If the reciprocity is not there mm-hmm. or, um, those you know the love is not equally exchanged Mm -hmm. or the way that they show up for you doesn't Mm -hmm. have to look exactly the same it could be in other ways that they serve you but if they're not doing those things it's going to be more hurtful when you're like dang not only was i the better friend but you also broke g-code and some of my deal breakers that's what i'm saying i didn't i didn't learn that as a result of the breakup though like it took this space for me to see wow Mm. our share our friendship G code, G code. What I think is th- should be boundaries you should never cross. You will, you will do some stuff that. So I'm thinking, hmm, do I need to extend the olive branch? Or I'm realizing like, wow, I showed up for this person. I did all this, and I'm like, and it wasn't returned. So then I'm like, all these questions I'm asking as a result of the breakup. Now in our breakup, I'm ask, I'm missing you. I'm realizing like, dang, Madi, your value was so big that it was harder to not to not respond to your olive branch mm-hmm. or not to want to help you because we both had to restore it together Mm -hmm. it wasn't just you so in this situation I'm like you know when I'm thinking about this in this space I've had a lot of time to process Mm -hmm. like wow you know is this person really my and truly my friend is this Mm -hmm. worth fighting for is this is this worth go you know saving you know and and that's what I'm dealing with is it worth saving I have to access as you know really look at like really is this worth it you know, and I'm taking time with that right now. So in this moment in time, you're asking me these questions. I also need to like your mom, th- that conversation really made me think like how would it maybe her interpretation is different. Maybe I didn't 
I wasn't the friend to her. Like, you mm -hmm. know, and I really have had time, a lot of time to think about that you as well. You might have appreciated the things that you thought you but, were doing. Yeah, because I was not shucking and jiving, but I was us, really though, giving. What comes with the friendship package may not have been something that she's like, that matters to her or means something. Right. And I didn't think about that with and my And I'm girlfriend. thinking like, all this stuff uh, means something that you're seeing these mm -hmm. gestures. You're seeing me include you in my life. You're seeing me. You are part of everything. I'm like, I'm including you. I'm like. And I'm thinking this is showing you love. Mm -hmm. This is showing you you're a part of the family. Mm -hmm. Whereas she ain't thinking that. <laughs> and what I, I'm just like, oh, it's two different interpretations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in managing my own expectations and managing this break that's unresolved, I've had to come to terms with an acceptance that maybe this person is not my friend and I need to accept that. Or maybe I'll be open to a conversation at a later time. But one thing is, I'm not going to close off to it because I will still honor vulnerability and humility. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a principle that no matter what, I know I have gotten bitten along the way from being too, you know, mm -hmm. generous or kind or whatever with allowing people in. I do think that everybody makes mistakes. I do think that we're all human and that we're all in our places, in our process with our evolution journey. And, you know, I, w I would still be open to a conversation. So I would say for people that are struggling with an unresolved situation, I think that, you know, you have to assess whether it's worth it or not. Mm -hmm. You have to really look at, you know, what this person's value is. If you guys share the same friendship values and, you know, and if so, then be open to the possibility because the value of having great friends and what they can mean to your life just outweighs, you know, the, the possibility of them not being that like, People can change. People can evolve. Being open to that. And I will be. And I am open to that. So I don't want to encourage people to just be like, oh, like, whatever. I'm done. I'm cool. Let it go. Whatever. Yeah. If there. Well, that's why I wanted to get yeah. different layers of how relationship breakups can look. Yeah. Um, and how makeups can look, too. Mm -hmm. And I think that with our experience, there is this level of kind of. Um, trying to honor and not go through the breakup again. Like we're kind yeah. of like, oh dang, I don't want to go through another breakup. Yeah. So let me apologize for this thing. Or let yeah. me like, did I have different, let me double check on this thing or let me speak on this thing when it does happen or question mm -hmm. this thing so that we can avoid those pitfalls yeah. again. And I think that when you're, you know, you operate in that mindful place, you can take away the learning lessons that you're supposed to and then apply mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. next go around. And I think yeah. that's what you and I are actively working to do. You know, and it doesn't always look like that across the board with makeup breakups. But the other point of this conversation was that I want if you guys want friendships for you to nurture those yes. and recognize when they are truly unhealthy or is it just you being immature and in your mm -hmm. ego? And I think that's what we really have to, like, assess the value that someone brings to you, like yep. you said, and really making like a conscious choice of getting outside of self and restoring that relationship if you want it because on the other side of that is this is is basically 20 plus years of like you know this is like our relationship to me is like one of a kind and it's mm -hmm. so beautiful it's so nuanced it's so energizing it's so inspiring it's so Agreed it's all of these that. things so on the other side of that is is a great friendship and that's what I think I want people to take away is that it's worth it, you know. For sure, um, I I can't imagine where I, where I would be without all of the amazing friends that I have. I cannot imagine life without that. <laughs> so, with that being said, you guys go out there and make some friends, um, and <laughs> and make up with your friends. Yeah. No, Diddy, let everybody know. Thank you so much for joining me. Yes, on this was so this, fun. Um, friendship. And you did get a little breakup. bit of tears out of me. I did. I saw a little like watery a little eye. Bit. Yes, through your contacts. <laughs> <laughs> I got. LASIK. If you didn't have the con, oh yeah, I, I got LASIK. LASIK. I, I can see. You. I took you to. I picked you up from your right. LASIK appointment. <laughs> 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 Uh, it, let everybody know where to find you and um, latest box office hits, all of the above. Um, well, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at at Azure D D A Z U R D E D E. That's it. You're not going to plug any of your work? Okay. You guys, watch Google her. Go to her IMDb. You'll oh, see gosh. all the projects that she's done. 
Uh, you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mati. Go to the spicylife.com, click and subscribe uh, to this episode, share it with a friend. Also, schedule a consultation on my website. Uh, but make sure that you guys absorb this. I know our lives sound crazy in our relationship, <laughs> and you're probably thinking, like, dang, these are such girls. Yes, it, we <laughs> are very much women operating in our yeah. feminine energy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all of the femininity of emotions and stuff. Um, but as you can see, like, it also uh, is a is a beautiful place to be when you can love someone so much through like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and there you guys have it. You've just been spiced. The